All right, after some videos of concepts, introductions, and qualitative methods, it's time to actually solve some DEs. This video and other later videos will cover the most important te techniques for solving first order ODEs. It's no longer necessary to assume these are autonomous. If they are, then there will be a phase line, and that phase line can visualize what's going on, but if they're not, I can still talk about the direction field and the integral curves. The first class of equations to solve are separable equations. Those who did Calculus 1 with me will recognize these, since we solved them already in that class. A separable equation is a first order ODE, where the derivative is isolated on the left, and the right is a product of two expressions, one involving only the dependent variable, and one involving only the independent variable. In this video, I'll use y for the dependent variable and t for the independent, but of course many names for the variables can be used. f and g are not the functions I'm trying to find, that function is y of t, but they are ways to define an expression in y or in t on the right side. These two equations here are separable, the y piece and the t piece are in two different expressions, and those expressions are multiplied together. The last equation here is not separable. There are products of t's and y's, but there is no single group for y or a single group for t whose product together makes the right side. The addition of these mixed terms means that this cannot be separated. The structure of a separable equation allows for a nice consistent solution method. Let me walk you through that method in general. Here is the separable equation. First, I'm going to take the expression in y and move it to the left side by dividing by that expression. Then only t remains on the right. Then I'll integrate both sides in t, which makes sense because t is the independent variable. The right side will end up being just an integral of g of t, and the left side is a little bit more confusing. However, since y is a function of t, remember that's what we're looking for in all of this, we're trying to find the function y of t, I can use this fact to make a substitution y equals y of t. This looks really strange, but it does actually make sense. In a substitution for integration, I use the derivative to change the dy into dt in the integral notation. Here, that's just dy over dt. I don't know what the derivative is, but I know its form, I know its symbol. Well, then I can make the replacements. 1 over f of y remains the same, but now I think of y as the variable for integration dy over dt times dt becomes dy according to the substitution. The result of all of this is an integral on the left in y and an integral on the right in t. From here, I just do both integrals if I can, and then try to solve for y. If both of these are possible, then I'll have discovered what function y of t solves the equation. Note that when I do both the integrals, I only need one constant of integration since the constant on the left can be subtracted and taken to the right and combined with whatever constant of integration I already had on the right. Now let's actually solve a separable equation. This is separable. The left side is the product of 1 over y and sine t. I want to take all the y variables to the left, so I multiply by y on both sides to do this. Then I integrate. Using the substitution, I change the left to an integral in y. You don't need to explicitly state this step every time, you can go straight to the y integral, but I wanted to make it clear here in working through the first example. Both integrals are reasonable, a power rule on the left and a trig integral on the right. I put the constant of integration on the right, and then I try to solve for y, which I can do here by multiplying by 2 and taking a square root. I do need the plus minus here, indicating two possible solutions. Note that I didn't write 2c here. Since the constant will usually be term determined by an initial condition, we often fold other arithmetic into the constant by convention. c or 2c doesn't really matter here, since that value will be determined later. This might seem strange or lazy, but it is standard practice for working with constants of integration in differential equations. Here is the direction field for the DE we just did. I expect solutions that are mostly flat functions with a bit more oscillation if they are near the x-axis around these two circles. Well, here are the integral curves, and these are also exactly the graphs of the function y equals plus minus square root c minus 2 cos t for various values of the constant c. The solutions match the integral curves, as they should. Here is another separable equation. 
This one is actually an autonomous equation, but I can solve those as separable as well. I just treat the second part, g of t, as constant 1. And then I separate y on the left and t on the right and integrate in y on the left and in the right on, and in t on the right. The left is the hyperbolic arc tangent integral, and the integral of a constant is, of course, t on the right. I add the constant of integration again on the right. Then I solve for y. Multiply by negative 2, apply hyperbolic tangent to get rid of the hyperbolic arc tangent, then multiply by 2 again, and the solution is y equals 2 hyperbolic tangent of negative 2t plus c. Here again is the slope field, and it looks like a function that levels off between 2 and negative 2, and here are those integral curves for at least part of the slope field. These are exactly the hyperbolic tangent functions. The constant c moves these left or right, giving a whole family, all of which match perfectly the directions of the slope field.